Shalom and welcome to another weekly Bible studies. We continually write and divide the word truth. Okay, I'd like to welcome all the YouTubers or anybody viewing past videos or present videos or possibly, Lord willing, future videos. Uh, we've been talking for several months. Uh, we've been going over the what Paul and John and the early uh, believers taught according to the prophecy, according to the uh, testimony of Jesus, the testimony of Yeshua, which is the spirit, the water, and the blood that is revealed uh, by John the Baptist when he baptized Christ and the Holy Spirit descended upon the Messiah. And then the blood of John as he was standing at the foot of the tree when the, pierced, when the soldier pierced his side and the water and the blood come out. Uh, these truths, which is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus, people, has been lost because of iniquity. Uh, so, you know, when I'm sure when people watch some of the videos, they say, gosh, I've never heard that. I mean, my testimony is so-and-so or, or her testimony about Jesus saving her or all these people that give these different testimonies are personal. They are of... Uh, uh, people, their their own personal testimony. That does not edify the body of Messiah, people, the body of Christ. It's only the prophecy. The prophecy is God's uh, prophecy about his son, people. Now, to understand this, uh, you know, you, you've got to study the scripture. Now, there's a lot of people think that you can read the Bible in English, especially the King James Bible, uh, King James Bible, and that's all you need, uh, you know. And when so, when people start talking about uh, some Hebrew or some Greek, then uh, uh, especially people in America that's uh, been raised with the denominational teachings, they don't teach any of that. They just get up there and read the verses, and then they give their uh, whatever their denomination or whatever uh, their creed is. And that's what we've all been uh, raised in. It's like the that's the authority. But when you, if you start studying the Bible some, then you kind of see that some error. And of course, we are supposed to discern the spirits, whether it be of God or of error. Of course, you're not taught any of that because none of them are in error. So I've talked to you about the iniquity. And so, so you give a lot of these people that say, hey, if you're listening to somebody who wants to explain some Greek or looks at some definitions or uh, things about the Greek, the, get away from them uh, because uh, you don't need the Greek or if somebody's wanting to talk about the Hebrew language, uh, get away from them because we've got the King James Bible. Well, people, that's about, that's absurd, but I mean, we're at the end. Iniquity is abound and the falling away, the strong delusion, all those things that uh, in, that are in the Word of God are coming to pass. So, you know, if you want to sit under somebody and say that the church is growing and the greatest revival has ever been is right around the corner when Christ said the love of many, that means the love of the truth, the, the agape of the truth, people, will decline. In other words, grow colder and colder. Uh, then, uh, and that iniquity would increase. Uh, in other words, that means it would abound, it would increase, multiply. So, I mean, I, you know, it's pretty uh, evident that these false teachers uh, don't love the truth because they would be teaching the truth. But they have pleasure in unrighteousness, which is Paul reveals and Peter reveals. So, uh, I'm gonna go. I've been over and and will go over those uh, verses uh, continually for those who got ears to hear and eyes to see. And when Paul talks about the testimony of Jesus, which is confirmed in you, uh, the believer by the prophecy, singular. Also, all of this is singular. Uh, then once that happened, you don't like anything. And there's no other gift, no other woman, man, anything coming behind that. And that's why in reference to the book of Revelation, once John penned that to the seven churches of Asia, that uh, uh, 
that is what we have to endure all the way to the end till Christ comes, and that's his testimony, the word of God, the, why John, the beloved, was, uh, why, that's why he was arrested and put on the island of Patmos 1900, nearly 2,000 years ago, that because of the, uh, he was arrested uh, and he was uh, the brethren and patient in tribulation, uh, and he was coming to being on the island of Patmos because of the word of God, the testimony of Jesus. He was kicked out. He was arrested, people. The same thing's coming again when people think about the, uh, talk about the two witnesses. They don't have any idea. The two witnesses are going to confirm the debar in the Hebrew. What is the debar, the matter of the fact? In other words, that is in the English, uh, excuse me, in the Greek, or in the English, it's the Word of God. It's the uh, Logos, or it could, or some, some of Christ teaching and saying in his Word is called the Rhema of God. So that's, that's what he was arrested for, the same thing. The two witnesses are going to bear record to the testimony, <clears throat> and when they finish the prophecy, uh, they're going to be killed by the beast, people. And then Christ is coming. Why? Because in his word, in, in his debar, he always has two out of the mouth of two or three witnesses that will confirm the word. Now, in the body of Christ, we are the body of Christ. Now, what edifies, which I've already told you, the building up of the church or how the Messiah told Peter and the apostles that I'll build my ecclesia and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Well, <clears throat> building his ecclesia is through his testimony that is birthed in us, which saves us. The spirit, the water, and the blood is the three that bear record in the earth, which the Father, the Creator, the Father, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh. Well, see, that's, we, that's why we bear record to the Word of God, which is the Word made flesh, which He had to be made flesh. He had to be created, come into being, in a woman that was under the law. She come into being, Miriam, uh, she was born as a virgin and was a virgin when the Holy Spirit conceived. And at the time that happened, she, she was under the law of Moses. That's the order. And Christ come into being through her womb, through her channel. That's how he come into the earth is through her being a woman under the law. Okay, so he could save those that were under the law by dying for them as long as they uh, believed who he was, that he was the Son of God. He was the Word made flesh, which is all uh, uh, was a hidden mystery because the kingdom now being in us was not with observation, which Israel also knew the prophets prophesied about. So people... Uh, to understand uh, uh, prophetically, in the Old Testament, God had his prophets. They prophesied uh, by the uh, being under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. They would prophesy, and of course, uh, the prophets wrote these prophecies down. Uh, but when Christ came to fulfill a lot of those prophecies, not all, all hadn't been fulfilled yet, but when the Word was made flesh and tabernacled among Israel there uh, and grew up as a branch, he was the one, uh, the, the forerunner, John the Baptist, was, was prophesied by Isaiah, the one crying in the wilderness, to make the crooked path straight. And in other words, the, John was the forerunner, and, uh, baptizing the people of Israel in, jo in the Jordan. And of course, uh, what we got to come to understand, people, is when the New Testament 
come into being when Christ died, and in his blood is the New Testament, it was poured out for the sins of many, those that believe, that's when the new creation, that's the new creation that God is creating in his son, which is a kind of first fruits, the wheat harvest, the barley harvest, as I've talked to you many hours about, is 144,000. That's the first fruits of the rice sheet and the beginning. Uh, that's, that is recognized there is the barley harvest. Well, we are tied to the barley harvest, the ones that believe. We are uh, connected to them through the covenants and the blessings, uh, or the, uh, which uh, Paul calls the commonwealth of Israel. So once we were far off from Christ, separated, because of not hearing the gospel and, and those that believe, uh, and separated from Christ and the commonwealth, the house of Israel. That's 144,000. That's the barley harvest. So that's why you had the first fruits in the feast of the Lord. You have the first fruits, and then you have the Homer count to Pentecost, the promise of the Father was the Holy Spirit to be sent. So the Holy Spirit then. It's like the wind. No one knows why it's going to blow, where it's going to blow, but, but it blows through the preaching of the gospel, and those that hear, the Holy Spirit blows on them, and they are uh, born again of the Spirit, and the Spirit then redeems the time and takes them back to witness the blood and the water being poured out, people. And that's the three that bear a record in the earth. That's our testimony. That's the the witness of Christ confirmed in you. That's a work that God does in you. That's what saves you. That's where eternal life is. I've taught on this for much, but where I'm going with this is you've got to understand that the prophecy, the only prophecy for the body of Christ, for the edification of the body, is the prophecy that we bear record to our Father's testimony of his only begotten son that he sent in the earth. And that's our witness, our debar in Hebrew, or the word of God that we witness to the world. Those that believe, then uh, they are taught the same prophecy because it's that prophecy that builds up the ecclesia starting nearly 2,000 years ago until the coming of the Lord, people. That's the fullness of the Gentiles. And so whether it's a Jew that believed in the early uh, teaching of, the, of Christ and become a new creature in Christ, or a Gentile later that become a new creature in Christ, they're neither Jew or Gentile, people. And that's the Eonian gospel that would be preached for the last 2,000 years. And yet uh, all these doctrines out there of saying, well, the Eonian gospel is not Paul's gospel. You know, the Re book of Revelation don't even blow. That's a Jewish saying. There is so much confusion with iniquity, people, and you've got to believe what Christ said if you're a believer, that iniquity would abound. That means it would increase before he come. Those that endure to the end, uh, he will give power over the nations. Those that endure uh, to the end and keep his works. His works are the works that he finished from his, for the Father. That's the testimony. The Father is the one people, the Spirit of God, the Father, the Creator. He is the one from heaven, the, the Spirit being God from heaven. He's the one that witnessed his Son in the earth. Nobody uh, received him. His own didn't receive him. Men love darkness rather than light. Uh, people think that when you confess uh, Christ as your personal Savior, they don't even know there again. When you look at the word confess in the English, well, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. Well, if you believe into Jesus that he is the Son of God, the Scripture tells you that you have the witness in yourself. That witness come from the Father is the Spirit and the water and the blood, and they all agree in one in the earth. That's your testimony. 
That's what the Word of God says, people. Now, guess what? If you, When people say the Greek don't make any difference or definitions don't make any difference, the Word of God, people, and confess, let me, let me show you real quick here. I wasn't going to go to this, but I was going to start off in Peter. But let me just show you here. Uh, when they say, well, if somebody wants to talk about the Greek or something, get away from it. Well, let's, look, let's go to Romans 10. This is, every, this is all of the churches, or most of them, especially Baptists. Uh, they believe this uh, right here. This is the old Roman road to salvation. Romans 9.10 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in the heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Uh, and Paul says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Unto righteousness is in Christ, people. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So if you believe with your heart, you're in Christ, and that's unto righteousness because that's God's righteousness that he sent his son to die for us. And we enter into his covenant. And we do confess with our mouth. That's what I've been doing, uh, uh, confessing with my mouth, is people don't understand what the word confess means. Confession is made, see, the confession is made unto salvation. Believe in the heart unto righteousness, being in Christ. But what comes out of your mouth is that's unto salvation. That's the witness. Now, the word uh, confess here, people, the word confess is a compound word in the Greek. Now, you got these people that say, hey, all you got to do is read the King James Bible. And all you got to do is listen to these preachers say, hey, do you confess that Jesus is the Son of God and he died for you, rose again the third day? If you confess that before men, then you are saved. Well, people, there, when, when a preacher says that because of the English, and that's what you understand, but the, but the word confess comes from two Greek words, and it means in the same way with, and then uh, the second compound or the second word is logos. It's homos a logos, people. Uh, that's the two words. It's in the same way with. So if I confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, then I have the witness that confession is the Spirit, the water, and the blood. I have to be in the same way with the body of Christ is built on the edification of the prophecy. What is the prophecy? That's the spirit. What is the spirit? That's the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's the word of God. That's your confession. It's not, if there again, now, now watch people, and this has to go through 2 Timothy 2.15, that we are commanded to study the word of God to show ourselves uh, as workmen to be approved and not be ashamed once rightly dividing the word of the truth. People, now, so if you confess, right here, Romans 10, 9, if you confess that Jesus is the Son of God and you believe in uh, righteousness, in other words, you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, well, okay, if you confess that, then you have the testimony. Why in your, Why don't you... The confession is the testimony of Jesus Christ, people. That God sent His only begotten Son for those that believe into Him. That's your witness. That's your debar, Hebrew. That's the logos, the rhema word of the New Testament. And Paul reveals, once that's confirmed in you, you don't like anything, and you don't. There is no other gift coming. That means you're not going to be preaching healing. You've been healed. You have eternal life. Uh, we moan and groan. People cut that out. The groaning is what we go through uh, as believers, because the whole creation is out of order. People, everything's out of order. Uh, 
And so the, even the body of Christ were the first fruits of the Spirit. Uh, moan and groan in their spirit, waiting on the sons of God to be revealed, waiting on Christ to send from heaven uh, to raise us at the last day at the last trump, people. There is so much iniquity out there, people. For those that uh, have ears to hear, eyes to see, you better be studying your Bible. You had better be uh, seeking God to worship because we only we must worship our Father in spirit and truth. And Christ is the Lord. He is the whole dose. He is the way. That's the whole dose. That's the narrow way, people. And few people find it. I didn't say that. If you believe into the Son of God, your Savior said that. So, so get out of the broad way that leads to destruction that Christ said. And find the narrow way that leads to life. For he is the whole dose, the way, the truth, the life, all definite article. It's not a way and a truth and a life. It's the way, the truth, the life. It is the spirit, the water, the blood. It is the testimony, the uh, prophecy, the truth, the word. It's him, people. And that's the only way. So, so when you hear these people talk that the words don't mean anything, well, if you confess Christ as your Savior and you believe in Christ, then the testimony, the spirit, the water, of blood is in you. It's been birthed in you. That's your witness to the world. That's shining a light in the dark places, people. That is the candlestick. That is a, a picture of the, or, or a type of the menorah. That's where the Holy Spirit, that is the truth. See, when you're born again of the Spirit, you must be born of the water and the Spirit. In the context that Christ is using there, the water, there again, the water, he is the living water. We drank his word, that's the living water. Out of your belly will come mouth. Out of your belly and out of your mouth will come living water. When people receive the truth and believe, then uh, and and out of our mouth is our confession, is our witness upon this earth, people. Now, now watch what the word says. So if I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that confession in my mouth is where the testimony is, people, because the word confess means, it means uh, in the same way with the word. That's, what the, that's the understanding of confess. So when these, when, what I'm saying to you is what they don't teach you is, is what that is in the Word. They just say, do you believe it? Confess it. Well, if you confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, now watch, people. I've showed you all this uh, many, many times. All right, so let's go to uh, John, or go to 1 John. Uh, 1 John, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 1 John, 5th chapter. Right here, the Bible is telling you, overcoming, overcoming uh, the world. And of course, this is by the word. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him, begot loveth him that is begotten of him. In other words, we love the brethren. we all been born of him, begotten of him. And we all uh, have, there again, 1080, been regenerated by the Word of God if you believe that Christ is the Son of God. Now, when you, when you follow the teaching then, uh, in 5, 6 is the testimony concerning the Son of God. Christ is he that came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but water and blood. And it is the Spirit that bear witness because the Spirit is not truth in, in the Greek. It's the Spirit's the truth. So the Spirit is the truth. 
Now the order is, people, it didn't say the truth is the Spirit. Because God's got an order in all things. But the Spirit is the truth because God is true and all men are liars. God is Spirit. He is the Spirit, people. That's what those that are born again, when you believe you've been born of the Spirit. Now, if you've been born of the Spirit, the Spirit will take you back to Passover when Christ died on the 14th day of the first month as our Passover lamb, people. That's the teaching. That's why you have to be born again. It's the Spirit that bears record to the water and blood. Now, if you, that's why Christ said you have to be born of the water and the Spirit. Of course, he didn't say right at that time water and blood and Spirit because he had not poured out his water and uh, blood at the uh, future Passover that it was appointed to, uh, to come into being. But that's, what, that's why he started teaching uh, his word to the people, to the Jews, to those that had ears to hear and eyes to see people preaching the kingdom of heaven is nigh at hand. The kingdom of heaven being nigh at hand, that's the pro Father's, our Lord's prayer that will come into being on the earth is when he died, what was being nigh at hand when his time come to die and pour out the water and the blood, the new creation, the New Testament, in my blood is the New Testament, New Covenant, Christ said. So the New Testament, New Covenant could not come in to be in, uh, uh, reacted upon until the tester died, people. So when that happened, then the New, Christ, the new Creation started for all those that believe, starting with the Jews first. As a whole, they rejected the word. Now, when, when I say that, he, because he was God, the word. The word was made flesh. Yet most people are taught he's, he rejected their Messiah, Jesus. That's true. But their Messiah, Jesus, was the word of God. That's why in Revelation 19, in the, in the last uh, book of the revealing of the Son of God, the Apocalypse, Apocalypso, the revealing of Jesus Christ, what is revealed there? That no man knows his name. Oh yeah, they fight over Yahshua, Jesus, and all that uh, because they still have in the flesh. But the Bible says no, no man knew his name except him his name is the Word of God. But nobody wants to believe that or teach that. You know, they want to fight over Jesus. And the Hebrew word Yoabah or, or Yeshua or Jehovah, Jireh, all that stuff. I'm not knocking any of that stuff. I, that's, if that's what you want, but you better know who he is and what you've been born of. You've been born of the Spirit, which the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and it was made flesh. So that's why you have the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the Word of God, people, which is the Spirit, the prophecy. These are all understandings and teachings that lead us to understand that's what the witness is about. That's what is the bar in the Hebrew is about that matter, that the bar, that word will be confirmed in this earth and then the end comes. That's why the two witnesses will stand up and finish their testimony of the testimony of the prophecy and then it's finished. The judgment's coming. So the body of Christ, be going back to what I was saying to you, the, God had all the prophets that he give by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, they prophesied and wrote it down, and a lot have been fulfilled and some hadn't, but one now. When Christ said, I will build my ecclesia, that ecclesia he's building is the spiritual kingdom. 
The body of Christ is the kingdom that the Jews or Israel didn't understand because they wanted a kingdom with observation. So the mystery of Christ, the mystery of God, the mystery of the gospel, all of these words that Paul used as mysteries or sacred secrets had been hidden from uh, mankind, people, because now the spirit of the kingdom is in you. When you're born again, you've entered into uh, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, which had to come into being when Christ finished the works and poured out the water and the blood as the new creation started for those who believe. That's the spiritual kingdom he's building. That's his body he's building. And that those that are, are in Christ, in the blood covenant, they confess with their mouth, uh, that means you are, you are in the same way with Christ and the confession of the testimony has to be confirmed in you, and that is the prophetic word for the body of Christ. That's the prophecy only for the believer, only for the brethren. And that's the building up of the edification of the body of Messiah, people. That's what this is about. Anything added to that, I went over with you or anybody that takes away from that testimony or the prophecy of the book, being a, talking about Revelation. God will take you out of the book of life. God will uh, bring the plagues upon you if you add to it. There again, if I'm teaching uh, the word of God, the testimony of Christ, which is the spirit, the prophecy, is coming out of my mouth, which is my confession uh, unto salvation, I have eternal life because my testimony is the testimony that the father bared record of his son. That's why I had to be born of God, not of the will of man, will of flesh, or, or of buds, but of God we're birthed. See, this is a supernatural work, the energy of God is doing in his, his uh, cre new creation through his son, people. So this is how important it is. Now there again, the prophets prophesied and they had different prophecies, but the body of Christ has one prophetic word, and that's the prophecy, which is the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit, the water, and the blood that saves us. And that's our witness to the world. That's what that is, people. It's not about all of these cliches and all this iniquity that God, that Christ and Peter and John and Paul and, and the book of Revelation that all warns us that many false teachers will stand up and deceive many. And then Christ says, uh, even if it's possible at the end, when the strong delusion is sent we're right on the verge that Satan's going to be given all power with lying wonders and miracles, people. And Christ warned us in Matthew 24, uh, 21 of Luke and 13 of Mark, that uh, that uh, if it's possible, the, uh, his elect would even be deceived by the great miracles that are coming. Now, you, you, you go on the Internet or go on all the TV channels and... Uh, you got, uh, I, I don't even watch this guy, but uh, his, his, I think his name is, uh, name of his ministry is Sid Roth, uh, Supernatural, the realm of the supernatural miracles. And then you got all these people that want to preach and look, well, they're going to get them. It's coming. Because of the word of God says that in the end, that Satan will begin all lying wonders and miracles if it's possible to see the very elect people. Because we don't, that we can't add to the testimony, people. We can't take away from it. That is what you endure uh, to the end. That is the Eonian gospel. Now, you know, people, it's so amazing because you've got, you've got these people that teach the rapture the fourth chapter of the book of Revelation, the rapture, when John is caught up in the spirit, that's the rapture. 
and from the fourth chapter to the 19th chapter, the church is never identified again in the book of Revelation. It's up there, and you got Perry Stone. Uh, you got all these uh, huge, huge ministries uh, that are teaching falsely because they don't even bear a record. They don't even know what the testimony is, people. Have you heard? At what, when is Perry Stone teaching that once the testimony of Jesus Christ is confirmed in you, you don't like anything and there's no other gift coming? See? Now, all these people claim to be uh, uh, teachers. Well, let me, uh, before I get old, let me, I'm, I'm getting away from what I need to show you. So we've got the three here that bear a record in the earth, right here. Here's the witness, uh, the record here. The spirit, the water, and the blood, they all agree in one. Now, if we receive the witness of man, what does uh, John reveal it to the believer? The witness of God, which were born of his spirit, is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath recorded or testified or witnessed of his son. Now, what is that context? What is the spirit, the water, and the blood? That's what God said. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So, so God was witnessing because Christ was sealed with a spirit from heaven when John baptized him. And in John uh, 1936, Don Beloved witnessed to give testimony, bear record, and said this witness is true when the soldier pierced his side and the blood and the water poured out. So this is what the finished work that Christ did, and this is what the Father witnesses on. Now, not, now notice now, if you confess with your mouth, people, and all these people, uh, that's an altar call, that's what people tell you, the, uh, the, the preachers. Okay, well, let's say you did that, and you got baptized in water. Well, I'm asking you, according to the Word of God, what are you going to do with this right here? When you study your scripture right and divide the word, what are you going to do with it? John 5, 10. He that believeth on the Son of God hath, that's echo, that means you possess the witness in yourself. Okay, now you've got it in you. What are you supposed to be doing, people? Well, you're supposed to be confessing it. Oh, it's in you. Now it's got to be confessed. What? If you confess with your mouth. See, people don't know what the word confess means. But yet, just go on the internet and look, and I, and that's fine. I don't care. They can call me everything in the book. I, they did that to the Messiah. So that's, that's only, uh, that's according to Christ. When they cast out your name as evil for his name's sake, his name's sake, people, you've got to study. And as you study and grow in the grace and knowledge of Messiah, his name's sake is the word of God, not Jesus. Not Yahshua that they won't argue. That, that, what does that mean? Salvation. But the word of God is salvation. And it was made flesh, and he was given that name. But what do you think Paul meant when we don't, we don't look to no man after the flesh and not even Jesus after the flesh now? Because he now is glorified. He's not in the flesh. See, he's a spiritual glorified uh, at the right hand of the Father. And so we look at him, and his name is now the Word of God. It was the Word, but that's who he is. That's who he was. That's who he was when he was made flesh. And now that's who he is, uh, and that's, and that's uh, the Word of God uh, is coming back for those that he has birthed, those that he is uh, that are in the same way with the Word. That's what confession means. It means homos, logos, homo lego. That's in the same way with Christ. And we are told in the word that we don't add to that and we don't 
take it or cut it off. So very important people. Now there again, well you going now here now if you don't not if you just say yeah I believe I believe on the uh, the Jesus Son of God then you have that word hath means you hold it. It's in you. It's a relationship and a condition. It means you're possessed with it. It means it comes out of your mouth. That's your witness. Uh, uh, that's what uh, uh, the witness or the testimony of Christ is what edifies the prophecy of that edifies the body, people. I've showed you all that. All right, now what, now what is said here? He that believeth not God hath made him out to be a liar. See, it's the Father's testimony, and if you believe that, you've been born of that. That's why I keep saying this. All these people who teach it, you know, when you're born again, you've got to be baptized in water. Well, baptized in water, H2O, has nothing to do with the Spirit, the water, and the blood. That's water that's baptism. It's about being baptized into Christ. You're baptized into the Word, people. The Word is in you. It overwhelms you. It's the Spirit in you. See, it don't, it, the Holy Spirit, if you're the temple of the Holy Spirit, you will confess that, the testimony of Christ. Uh, but know you not, you are the temple of God. If The temple of God, people, that's the Father's testimony of His Son. We're the temple of God, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Because now, okay, now everybody talks uh, Holy Spirit. Well, the Holy Spirit is the truth. Oh, me. But yet they want to think the Holy Spirit is, the Holy Spirit is the truth. That's the Word of God that's been birthed in you, people. That has to grow up in you, that you have to eat and drink of. Not eating and drinking of food for the physical body. That's why Christ said, unless you eat and drink of me, the truth, you have no life in you. All right, now, let me show you something, people. So, now, look. Look what John says. And this is, there he comes back. This is the witness that God has given to us. By the witness of his son, the spirit of water and blood, what is, what is that witness? That is the eternal Zoe life that you have to be born of. And this life is where? It is in his son. That's when you entered into the son's kingdom by believing. Now look what John says. He that possesses, same Greek word, echo. If you have the Son, you have Zoe life, eternal life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. But notice, right here, same word. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness, the testimony in himself. It's in you, people. Now, 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 I want to show, we're going to go real quick to what Paul said. Now, look what Paul says here. All right, let's go. This, this is John to the circumcision, to the Jews. It's also to us. The teaching is for both. But now, now Paul was a, a preacher to the, uh, the Gentiles. So, look what Paul is saying in 1 Corinthians 1. I've showed you this many times. But look, here it is. The testimony or the witness right here. All right. That in everything we are enriched in Christ, in all utterance or word, that's logos. This is not jibber jabbers. This is the word. In all uh, word and in all knowledge, gnosis, knowledge. Why? Why? Because even as this is a continuation of, by being enriched in him and the word and all knowledge, for as or even as, now what does that mean? It means in as much or according, and, and what is in all uh, utterance of knowledge uh, or word and knowledge is according to the testimony of Christ. 
which has, was confirmed in you, talking about in the believers here at Corinth. Now, once that's confirmed, he's, Paul says, so that, therefore, in other words, in so much, therefore, ye, you don't like anything. That's what this word come behind means of lack, destitute, fault. But you don't fall and you don't like anything. And then Paul goes and says, also, in no gift, no woman, man, thing, a gift is coming after this testimony, which is in him and, and in the word and in all knowledge is confirmed in you. Then there is nothing else coming waiting for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then Paul goes all the way to the end of the age. That's where we're at now in one eight. That same testimony uh, will also confirm us to the end that you be found innocent or blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ when he comes to judge the world. How much more plainer, but this is not taught, people. All this has been lost, see. So now, when uh, let's go now, uh, before we close, I'm going to go to Peter and, and, and show you how Peter teaches the same thing that I just showed you. Uh, I've talked about John and uh, Paul and but let's go to Peter here and look what uh, Peter is saying here as he starts according to his divine power has given to us all that pertain to Zoe life right here life and remember in other words uh, we have eternal life same word here all right so he's talking to believers and gotten us through the knowledge of him that called us to the glory and virtues. And, of course, Peter uses the word knowledge of him is Christ. The knowledge here, he uses a compound word or a word that has the uh, uh, the prefix epi. Epikinosis, it means acknowledgement. It means uh, full discernment. In other words, epikinosis is a little bit more stronger in the word than gnosis. Gnosis means knowledge. Epi means more of a discernment. Okay, so whereby you're given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises, that by these you be partakers of the divine nature, and having escaped the corruption that in the world is through lust or pride, envy, and beside this given all diligence, add to your faith virtue and virtue knowledge. And do not as temperance and do temperance patient and patient godliness. And do godliness brother kindness and do brotherly kindness, charity or which is love. Now this this is the word charity or love here. Is, why is it uh, talking about this uh, believer? Is because God's love. God's love is only God's grace. And God's love for his creation is those that uh, believe and enter into the covenant or enter in the same way with uh, as believers into Christ, into the kingdom. See, that is how God so loved the world. See, God so loved the world, he sent his son to finish his works and that works would to pour out the water and the blood. And that was the water, the blood, and the spirit, which he testified of his son. That's birthed in us. And so that is God's love for us. Now, as a believer, that's our love for the brethren. Because we're all in the same way with, with Christ. He's head over the body, people. It's not all of this stuff that's going on, which, I, which is iniquity, which... Those that have eyes to see and understand, they will come to understand this. Uh, you will see this, but this is what you're studying. Now, everything Peter's saying, this is those that have this, they have the charity for one another, the love for one another. That's God's love. Uh, that's why Christ said, I give you a commandment. It's not really a... a New commandment, but love one another. He's talking to his body, his believers, uh, people. When you, t when, on a person on the outside that you're witnessing to through the testimony of Jesus, 
uh, through the prophecy, the spirit of the prophecy that's been, uh, you've been birthed with, that's been confirmed in you, uh, that's your love for them. That's our message to a dying world. That's the message to the darkness, you see. Now, that's how, uh, that's, the body is, is, portrays that witness to the world. That's why the two witnesses, when they stand up for the last three and a half years, that will confirm the end. Nothing's changed. It says they will uh, witness or testify for three and a half years, the testimony. And then it says, uh, after their prophecy, of the prophecy singular of the testimony is finished, the beast will overcome and kill them. So their three and a half year uh, teaching on uh, this earth in Jerusalem is going to be the testimony of the prophecy people. That's what they're going to bear record to. And once their prophecy, the prophecy is finished, singular, it's not they're going to prophesy this and this. They're going to be given power as plagues to pour out. Yes. But that's, those are plagues, people. That's not, uh, the plagues is power from God, judgments. But they're not wondering, working miracles that Satan's going to be given. You see, and that's what all these people are looking for. They're going to get them. They, they, well, they think that all of this is, they have no idea what the scripture is saying because they are an iniquity people. They, they didn't love God's truth. I've read those scripture. What is the truth? That's the testimony. That's the spirit. That's the prophecy that has to be confirmed in us. And there's no other gift. There's no other like after that's confirmed. So I can't, I can't preach or teach the testimony, the prophecy of Jesus Christ, which is our witness upon the earth as the body that edifies, that edifies the body and then turn right around and talk about uh, God wanting you to heal and send, you send in uh, all this, uh, send in me your prayer request. What? Uh, and so I can pray over you so, so God can bless you, bless you, bless you. Uh, now, in the revealing of Jesus Christ, uh, in the first chapter of Revelation, it says, all those that read and understand the prophecy of this book, they're blessed and keep those things written for the time is at hand. But see, nobody even talks about that. That's not taught. You know, send your money in and God, uh, and we will agree with your faith and by faith and uh, God's going to heal you with cancer or get your son saved or get your, uh, all this stuff. That's not, that's iniquity, people. Now, you can hate what I'm saying and you can cut it off. Uh, but there is those out there uh, that God will quicken. There is those out there that will study. We'll, we'll look at these scriptures and study in the Holy Spirit. Uh, see, in John, I'm not, I'm not got time to go there. But if you go to John 15, 39, 15, 36, John 15, 39, it, it tells you that when Christ said, I'll go away to send the Comforter. And the Comforter is the Spirit, the truth. And it says that that spirit, that truth comes from my father and he, the spirit, the truth will only testify of me. So see, I've been born of the spirit. I've been sealed with the spirit. And that's all, that testimony is confirmed. That's all I can witness and that truth I can witness to you. Now I can talk to you about who the first fruits are. That's true. Uh, about uh, the new covenant that I that uh, Jeremiah said I'll make a new covenant the house of Israel house to all of these are truths from Genesis to Revelation, but the body of Christ is we can teach and learn uh, from the old and the new. That's uh, and that is uh, that is good. We do that, but if you believe into the Son of God as the body of Christ, 
then you've entered into his kingdom and you're going to bear record to his witness which come from the Father. That's what I'm talking to you about. So see, what I'm saying to you is not for those that don't believe. Paul tells you it's only for the believer. So those that don't believe, they're not going to believe it. And for Israel, the remnant that has not uh, been given the sign in heaven and mourn for the one they pierced, they're not going to believe it either because God in his word has already said uh, after the tribulation of those days, they will see the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then the next thing it says, they will beat their chest and mourn for the one they pierced. That will fulfill Zechariah 12, 10. So God's going to grant them grace and supplication, even though they rejected him 2,000 years ago. God is merciful, but he's got an order of when that will happen. So I know uh, the truth of that, but that's not my testimony. That's teaching that truth. But that, if I know, I can know that and a lot of other truths in the Bible, but if I'm not bearing record to the testimony, that's my eternal life, people. That's why Paul says it has to be confirmed in you, people. Uh, now, right here, uh, let's let's go let's go back to Peter here. So, God is brother, uh, uh, brotherly kindness, and brotherly kindness is love for the brethren, the believer here. This is who this Peter's talking about. For if these things be in you and abound, they make. Uh, you neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge, and that's the epic gnosis, of our Lord Jesus Christ. But growing in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ is the testimony, the witness. Now watch what he says. But he that liketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he is purged from, his, from the old Adam, from his old sins. Now watch as Peter is everything Peter the context is he's building, is going to come into what he's uh, building to people. Wherefore, the, notice, wherefore the rather, and this word is balloon. Paul uses this in 1 Corinthians. In other words, he said, uh, I'd rather you uh, be given the prophecy than speaking in languages or tongues. So, so Peter is, where, where the wherefore, in other words, the greater degree, a far more greater degree, he says, brethren, give diligence, right here, to make your calling and election sure. For if we do these things, you shall never fall. Okay, now, isn't this amazing, people, to make your election sure? Okay, now, this word election, wait a minute. People don't really like this because uh, this defines the body as God's elect. Because, you know, man has free will, so man can choose what he wants to. Uh, whosoever will, right? No, it's the ones believing is the correct terminology of that. But, but nevertheless, uh, this kind of rubs the uh, feathers of those that think they can uh, choose their own salvation. He is already, uh, God's already chosen a way for salvation. All right, now, so right here, calling uh, the election sure. Now, the word sure here, I've told you, it means for the, be firm or for steadfast or be stable or sure. Uh, Basility, it comes from uh, uh, 939, but when Paul uses the word uh, uh, confirm right here, I'll just show you, uh, they're close to, uh, uh, I'll just show you, let me go back to 1 Corinthians here. Uh, well, 1 Corinthians, uh, I'll show you the word Paul uses, and Peter uses uh, the same sister word, 1 Corinthians 1, we were just there, and I said the testimony confirmed in us, or confirmed in you, so, uh, right here even so as or uh, as much so the testimony of Christ confirmed right here confirmed in you okay 
we're just tying Peter's words with Paul to make sure they're going to fit. So let me highlight this to another color here. We'll make it pink or whatever. Okay, so see this word G950? Guess what? It comes from 949 to uh, confirm, establish, uh, uh, stabilitate. Okay, all right, let's go right back. Now, now remember, 950, Paul uses the Greek word 950, but it comes from 949. All right, so let's go back to uh, Peter's words here. Uh, all right, here we are. Verse 10, I think. Let's drop down to, yeah, here we are, verse 10. Wherefore, uh, I had rather, brethren, give diligence to make sure you're calling election sure. Uh, notice, here it is, 949. So Peter uses 949, Paul uses 950, which comes from 949. So it means to make sure, so that you do these things, you'll never fall. All right, for so an entrance shall be ministered to you abundantly in the everlasting or the Eonian kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, now let's continue here. Wherefore, I will not be net, uh, uh, net, uh, net, uh, well, I can't even, negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and you be established in the present, the truth here. Uh, now, here's the word uh, present truth. Now this what this is uh, uh, be there plus like be near at hand and this present truth. Okay, now yea, I think it meant as long as I am in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in this remembrance. Now he's continuing in this. We're going to see what his train of thought. What he's uh, going to continue to stir him up to keep in remembrance. Now. Uh, Right here, when when Peter says, I think it meant as long as I am in this present tabernacle, he's talking about in the flesh, knowing that shortly I must put off my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ had showed me. So what is Peter uh, witnessing right here? He's saying that it's not going to be long before I'm going to die, and he's going to die by a martyrdom death, because guess what? Christ had told him that back uh, before Christ uh, was crucified. Remember, Christ told him, and he even told him after he was he was raised that uh, he would die a martyrdom's death, and that's what Peter's talking about. So Peter knows it's it's almost time. Now he said, "Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be after my decease to have these things always in remembrance after Peter's gone, not to stir them up that you keep them." Now, 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 here, the context is what? Christ's glory and the prophetic word. For we have not followed after cunning devised fables when we made known to you the power and the perusio or the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Now, because Peter, they, he chose them. So when Christ came, the word was made flesh. This is what Peter's talking about. All right, now notice. For he, we, for he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from an excellent glory, this is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. Now this was on the mountain of transfiguration. See, so now, and Peter's going to tell you. He's going to take you back to Matthew 17. And he says, and this voice which came from heaven, we heard when we were with him. That's when John and James and Peter were with him in the Holy Mount. That's the Mount of Transfiguration. So Peter's taking them back. But look what he says. Now, he is telling them that he was there. And, and he witnessed all that. But now look what he says in this next verse, people. But we have, now there's that word echo, we possess, we have also, I've told you this, but we also as a believer, we have a more sure word. Now there's that word that uh, he used uh, back in verse 10. We also have a more a sure word, 
logos of prophecy. Now, there again, I've, this is not like uh, different prophecies, people. This sure word of prophecy is right here. Here it is in the Greek. We have a more sure the prophecy right there. The prophecy, not a prophecy, the prophecy. Okay, now there again, we have a more sure word, the prophecy. Whereunto you do well that you take heed. Take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that that no, not any prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in time by the will of man, but uh, holy men of God that spake that were moved by the Holy Ghost. So this, this, the prophecy here come from the Father. It come from the Spirit. It come from the Holy Spirit, people, that is, that is confirmed in us. So it's not of our private interpretation. The Spirit, water, blood, that's why the witness of God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is greater. And if you believe in the Son of God, you have that witness in you. That's, it, that's the testimony. It did not have anything to do with us or a private interpretation. It's confirmed in us by the Holy Spirit. That's why Christ said you must be born of the water and the Spirit, people. This is so amazing. But what I want you to see here, we also have a more sure word, logos, the prophecy. Where unto you, you, you make to do well that you take heed of the more sure word of the prophecy. Because that is going to take you unto, unto a light that shineth in a dark place until Christ comes. The day star until it arises and you, until we are changed and glorified. So this is unbelievable, people. But now, what, now let, me, let me show you this real quick. Paul knew what this was. John knew what this was. Peter, right here, I'm giving you Peter also had the more sure word or the confirmed uh, word, the prophecy. Now you say, well, now, I'll, now this is growing in the grace of God. Okay, you say, okay, Larry, I see that. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to verify this by the word. But you say, now Paul said that was confirmed is the testimony of Jesus. Uh, Paul didn't use the prophecy here. Now, Peter is using the word, the prophecy, but it don't say anything about the testimony of Jesus confirmed in you, right? I mean, that's a good, I mean, if people are looking at this, you're saying, well, wait a minute, He's, this is the prophecy, but how do we know the prophecy is what Paul was talking about when you have the testimony of Jesus confirmed in you, right? Or Jesus Christ. You see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm being a, the advocate here. So so I, I'm not going to stop here and because there's some out there that's going to see what I showed you what Paul said and I, John said in 1 John 5. Now we got Peter and the most prophetic word and if that's seen or the prophecy, but Peter didn't say anything about the... the uh, testimony of Jesus. Well, let's, you, you take them all and, and they all got to relate and they all got to fit. Okay, so now let's go to the revealing of Jesus Christ uh, and let's go to uh, uh, Revelation uh, the 19th chapter and let's confirm this if the prophecy is the testimony. So let's confirm it. Right here. So right here. And I fell at his feet to worship him, John to the angel. And the angel said unto John, See, 
Do it not, I am the fellow servant and of the brethren or thy brethren, the brethren or thy brethren that have. Now what's this word that have, people? That possess. Uh, you have the witness if you believe in the Son of God. That's what John 5, 1 John 5, 8 said. Well, right here, the revealing of Jesus Christ in the book of Revelation, right here, the angel told John, I am of you or anybody, the brethren that have, that possess what? There it is that Paul said, the testimony of Jesus or Jesus Christ. And the angel said to John, here's a command, worship God. How do we worship God in spirit and truth? And how do you bow to the will of the Father? That's worship. Here it is. What does worship mean? It means like to kiss God, uh, a, like a dog licking the master's hand, prostrate oneself in homage, reverence, adore. So we bow to the will. It's like uh, 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 we are kissing our master, the Father's hand. So we bow to the will of the Father. We, that's a command. We worship. We bow to His will. Now notice. I am a fellow servant of the and, and the brethren that that worse that have notice the testimony that have it. He he said, "I am the the brethren that have, not that don't have that have this." The testimony and same thing Paul said. It's got to be confirmed. He worship God. Now, what does he say, people? For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit, not the spirit of prophecy, it's the spirit, the prophecy. Okay, let's look at it here, right here, 1910. The spirit, the prophecy, right here. Right here. Here it is. There it is. The spirit, definite article, and, and the highlighted in yellow, and it's in the genitive singular, uh, feminine, uh, the prophecy. And the genitive case means a possession. So uh, you have the Spirit of God in you, which that Spirit is the prophecy, which is the testimony of Jesus. Now, there it is, people. 100 proved by the New Testament revealing of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, that the spirit, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit, the prophecy. All right, now, question. Let's go back to 2 Peter. Stir it up. Uh, take heed. Uh, right here. We have as the body of Christ the believer, the believers that Peter was teaching, we have also a more sure word, the prophecy. He said, where do that you do well if you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. That's what I said earlier. And that is the spirit, the word that we have is the prophecy and that will remain until the dawn and the day star arise and that's the coming of the Messiah for he is uh, the day star. Now, look, people. Question, and I close here. When Peter says to his, the ones he's teaching right before he's to be crucified, that this is the more pathetic word, that you take heed and do not lose this. And what is that? The word, the prophecy. People. Now, question. If you, if you have the prophecy, you have the Spirit. If you have the Spirit, you have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Because the testimony of Jesus Christ is the Spirit, the prophecy. So we have proven that Peter is talking about the testimony of Jesus. And all he mentioned was the prophecy. But it's the testimony, isn't it? I just proved it to you. By the revealing of the book of Revelation in the 19th chapter, that those that possess and have the testimony of Jesus have the spirit, the prophecy, and by having that, you have what? 
What did God witness to us that we have? We have Zoe life. We have eternal life. And when did the Messiah say, which the Father, he said everything that he come from the Father, when did the Messiah say that he would glorify us? We have eternal spirit life in us. He said, I will raise you up at in the last day, the last trump. So that's the promise. But we have eternal life. Earnest the down payment of the Spirit. We have it now if you possess the testimony. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may that Spirit witness your Spirit as we have traded these scriptures, this testimony with one another. And this testimony, the Spirit, the prophecy is only for the believer, the body of Christ, those that possess it. In Christ's name, amen.